Welcome back to the next episode of Four Expedition Adventurer. In this episode, we venture out with my brother Dan to explore ancient native dwellings of the Southwest. Along the way, I'll share a few car camping tips and conduct a walk around of my brother's Overland Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. The next episode of Four Expedition Adventure starts now. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. I'm Scott Luthold. Today I'm on a three-day overland trip, and I'm in a particular location in eastern Arizona. It's one of my favorite spots in the state to camp and hike. And I'll be out here uh, tomorrow morning. I'll get up and hike up into one of the canyons that's right here. And then Sunday morning I'll get up and hike in two other canyons. And I'll take you along with me on those so you can see just how extraordinary hiking in Arizona canyons can truly be. I will not review my location to you, however, because uh, all of these canyons and these hikes lead up to sacred places. And I really feel like sacred places need to be protected. And so I won't reveal my location. If some of you happen to find this spot on your own because you're an outdoor adventurer and an explorer like me, well, more power to you. And uh, if anybody decides they want to share the location in the comments below, I'll delete those because I don't want anybody to know where some of these places are. Nonetheless, I did invite my brother along. Um, I sent him the GPS coordinates because uh, he's going to be coming out later on this evening by himself. He's never been here. It's a long, um, difficult terrain road to get out here. He should arrive around 11 p.m. He's going to hike up into the canyons with me tomorrow and on Sunday. He's a really interesting guy. He's a very avid hiker and backpacker. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the last couple of weekends, he bought himself an iCamper SkyCamp Mini, and he threw it on top of his Nissan Frontier pickup truck. And he's been using that as a base camp and going out and hiking and backpacking different segments of the Arizona Trail with the hopes of completing the entire Arizona Trail on backpack. And so uh, he's a really interesting guy. He's, um, he's up for the challenge here, and these are pretty strenuous hikes. And uh, it should be really great, and I look forward to bringing that to you and sharing some of those beautiful scenes with you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I encourage you to become a subscriber. And of course, be sure to click the notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. And if you'd like to support 4Expedition, go to patreon.com slash 4Expedition. Your support goes a long way to creating quality content for this channel. I really look forward to sharing this episode with you. So sit back and enjoy the ride.
All right, so one of the things I thought I'd share with you while I was out here is how I pack my bathroom bag. And I know that might not sound all that exciting, but it's actually a pretty nice little setup and I've got a really nice little vanity that uh, makes things really convenient to get into your bathroom stuff. So anyhow, I've got one of these typical beauty bags that you can get at um, you know any uh, Target store or maybe um, like a women's makeup store or something like that. And uh, what I think is really cool about it is the fact that when you unzip it, it's actually got three different pockets. And I'll turn that around for you. In this top pocket, I keep my toothbrush, my comb, my shaver, some bars of soap, uh, some uh, chapstick, and some earplugs, and a couple things, uh, other little things like that. And then in the middle one here, I carry along, there's a little extra toilet paper in here. Uh, I have some um, essential oils, including patchouli, which is uh, something that'll help you sleep and uh, peppermint, which I use on, under my nose if my nose is stuffed up. And then I've also got in here some cough drops in case for some reason I started getting a cough, some Tylenol, some Advil, some uh, ear swabs, uh, a little bit of Vicks. And um, this is uh, actually a natural fragrance deodorant that a really nice small little glass container. And there's some cortisone in here. And then in the bottom, this is where I carry, uh, I've got some deep blue rub in here, which is for uh, back pain and, and ache, aches and pains and things like that. I've got some calcium magnesium in here, which is something that also helps you sleep. If you take two of these before bed, they'll actually help you sleep. And then I've got some, some poison ivy um, uh, scrub. I've got some neosporin. I've got some uh, herbal insect repellent. Uh, some nasal decongestants, and then I got this really nice little uh, uh, blister pack that um, it's, it's wool that you put on your feet in case you have blisters. And then I also have back in here some patches, some vapor patches. Anyhow, this is a pretty nice little handy setup to be able to access anytime you need some of these kinds of things. But anyhow, what's particularly cool about this, this bag is not only the fact that you can see inside of it, but uh, it's hangable. It's got this really nice little metal hook. And what I love about it is I can hang it anywhere in my, um, on the side of my rooftop tent, or I can hang it on a tree branch or something like that. I really like the fact that I can hang it right here by my car because sometimes when I'm shaving, I'll be using a mirror on my car to shave or something like that. And uh, this allows you to be a lot more hands-free and um, allows you to be able to see what's inside pretty easily. And I can leave that hanging here pretty much the whole trip. Anyhow, if you're interested in having a bathroom bag similar to this for your camping experiences, I've added a link in the description below this video. Just scroll down there and click on that. You'll find a product very similar to what I have here. Or you can also go to forexpedition.com and go to the Overland Equipment section. And I list out all of the different products that I use in there. And you can click the link there as well. shredded chicken you can get that at the grocery store this was like seven bucks worth of chicken but it's all white meat and it's all pre-shredded just stick that in the cooler I take some of that stick it in here with this tikka masala vegetable tikka masala by tasty bites and um, makes for a very nice hearty meal I also have some cheese I've got my favorite chips here which are Lately June, jalapeno lime, non-GMO, gluten-free, yum, yum, yum. Pull out my handy dandy bamboo spoon. Again, if you go on forexpedition.com and you go to the new equipment section and you go under um, overlanding, you'll be able to find a lot of these kinds of things on there if you're interested in having some of these things for yourself. Try to clean out these pots as good as you can. Less cleanup. And then, if you don't want what's inside of here to stick, because I'll be using this for my coffee tomorrow morning and everything else, you just want to rinse that out right away. Get that rinsed out and you're good to go.
I love tikka masala. It's probably my favorite dish, hands down. I really wish I could go out to dinner. I haven't been able to go out, just like you haven't been able to go out. And I know I can get takeout, but I don't have an Indian restaurant that close to me, so it's hard to get takeout and just go home. So I have to resort to making it myself when I'm out camping. <laughs> Making it as simple as possible. Yep. Oh. All right. First night in my iCamper SkyCamp Mini with the new carpeting and my X-Pad mat. I only inflated one of them. I didn't inflate the other one. Just gonna lay on one side tonight. All in all, it's pretty nice. I actually had to sleep with my head toward the door tonight because my tent is angled just a little bit. I actually had to build up a bunch of rocks underneath the wheels on the driver's side in order to keep the car uh, to be as level as possible. My brother Dan was able to show up early. He got here around, got here around 9.30. And I helped him set up, and we just chatted for a little bit, and now we both went to bed. Going to get up tomorrow morning and do a nice hike up into one of the canyons here. So we'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. Got a really good night's sleep last night. If you haven't watched my video about uh, removing the condensation out of a rooftop tent, be sure to watch that tip char video. But I removed the factory pads out of my rooftop tent, replaced it with some carpet, and then I got myself some X-PED mats, and I've been sleeping on those. And it's just a really nice, warm, comfortable sleep, and I'm really happy with it so far. But Probably dropped down into the 40s last night. It's in the 40s right now. It's just a beautiful place to be right now. I uh, just love the fact that you can camp year-round in Arizona. Anyhow, we're going to have some breakfast here, and then we'll uh, put on some backpacks and head up into the canyon here, and it'll just be a really beautiful day. So I'll introduce you to my brother here in just a little bit. Maybe we'll do a little walk around of his off-road overland rig. So everybody, this is my brother Dan. He's got the 4 Expedition hat on. He's a big supporter of 4 Expedition. I really appreciate it. Uh, anyhow, so he just got into overlanding recently and um, got himself this Pro 4X 
uh, uh, Frontier, put an iCamper SkyCamp Mini on the top of it, and he's getting it all rigged up. So I thought we'd do a little walk around. He can show you a little bit about what he's doing with it and what he plans to do in the future. Sound good? So, yeah, that sounds fine. So my, my plan, obviously, is I like the iCamper, so I went with it. But uh, I'm using the uh, Yakima rack, and I went with the lower HD so that I could put my rack up rack there with my camper on it and then have a, a space to get into my garage. My plan is to put uh, uh, a deck system in the back end of the truck so that I can store things in it and keep things stored so it's ready any time I want to go out and do some camping. So that's yet to be built and put in there but uh, for the most part uh, just kind of getting everything together so that I have a you know a decent system for my rig and and can continue to go out camping anytime I'm ready and, and have that done in, say, 15, 20 minutes and be out on the road. That's kind of the goal. You yeah, know? that's right. Typical goal of overlanding. Yeah. So why did you pick the Pro 4X? I like the, well, first of all, I've, I've always liked the Frontier. I think the Frontier is built well, and I and they've got a history of having, you know, really good reliability and things like that. And then I wanted the Pro 4X because the suspension system so much better and the shock system so much better. It's got rear lockers. Yeah, you can you can lock the uh, rear end and uh, also with four-wheel drive. And therefore, I can get back probably into a lot of different areas. And also had better clearance. There's about eight to nine inches of clearance. So generally, you can get through most everything. So the uh, the Frontier hasn't been redesigned in how long? Oh, gosh. I think it's been since like uh, 2002 or something like that since they... They is, renewed the design, yeah. Is Nissan planning on coming out with a new version, you think? I keep reading things that show that maybe 2021 might finally be the uh, transition to the Navara. You know, Navara is being used around the world, and it's a, it's a really nice design. I've seen some pictures of different Navaras. And I've actually I've seen also, a yeah. lot of overland rigs, uh, Navara overland rigs overseas. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of guys that have done a lot of neat things with the Navara. I found that it's difficult to get certain equipment for this vehicle because I think everybody's anticipating a new design coming out by Nissan. Yeah, so there's not a lot of aftermarket parts for it, or there are? There's some, but not, say, as many as Toyota has, because Toyota's obviously upgraded their yeah, you know, the design. Yeah, so people are maybe a little afraid to come out with parts for this model. I think so. I think they're afraid to come out with new ones because I think they know the design's due to change. It's yeah. been, I, I, I want to say it's getting close to you know 20 years or something like that that... Nissan's carried the same design. Yeah, which is good in some ways because it's it's reliable. Everybody knows it's reliable. There's no there's no recalls. There's, I think sales have stayed good. I think that's why Nissan doesn't change it too. And it's you know it's it's I, I, you you read of guys that get three hundred fifty to five hundred thousand miles out of these things and yeah. have no issues. You yeah. Know? yeah. So you want let's do a little walk around. You can show us what we're what you're doing. Okay. Well, obviously you can see I, I chose the uh, iCamper Mini and uh, mounted it on top of the Yakima. Um, I still have some plans to come around and uh, you know, I want to put the drawer system in and it still leaves me enough space that even the some of the uh, boxes that I use to store my equipment um, will still fit in there. I don't know that I'd actually do a uh, uh, refrigerator or not because I think the refrigerator might take up a little bit more space than what I have. But I don't know that that's necessary for me. I would like to do something more with this deck. This deck is kind of uh, difficult to use in that it's got all these little... Uh, cutouts in it. So I'd like to put some, you know, mag magnetized uh, platform on here, mm -hmm. maybe with some rubber on it so that the, the stove stays in place, things like that. You know, and I kind of added some magnetized locations on the bottom of the eye camper because it's made of aluminum, nothing will stick to it, so that I can actually have lights down on this section and use it as my kitchen, you know. So the deck system that I'll put in, it's about 12 inches tall, leaves me about another 18 inches above for space. Now, the deck system comes with two drawers, one extra large and one a little bit smaller for the Nissan. And then it's got a couple little compartments for some additional storage. But those drawers, you know, they come out maybe about two feet past the tailgate when the tailgate is down. Mm -hmm. It's also lockable and you can put things in there. It's pretty waterproof. You put your tailgate up, it's locked in there too. Right. Yeah, so you put the tailgate up, you lock your tailgate and it's locked. Nobody can really get into and it. And what kind of weight supports on top of those if you want to put other stuff on top of it? If you, re if you look at, take a look at the decked uh, website, they talk about like in the neighborhood of 2,000 pounds. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember if it's 1,500 to 2,000 pounds you guys should put on. So you don't keep this um, eye camper on top of your vehicle at all times? I have not taken it off since I put it on, but I have put in what I like to call my, my garage crane. And so I've kind of adapted the, the crane, put some additional pulleys on it so that I can widen it out and pick the whole thing off. Of, and I've got a, a, a high speed drill that I've, I've attached to it so that power it's powered yeah, so can, so <laughs> awesome like a right so down you just back your truck up into the garage and and 
lower it down onto your truck and you take off yeah. and you leave the Yakima rack on at all times, right? Yeah, I do. I, I like the Yakima rack. It was nice that it uh, is supported by the system that Nissan has for their their uh, tie down system in the back. Yeah, I forget what they call it. It's a railed system, and and it ties right into it. So it really works out kind of nice. And uh, you've been using this now pretty much every weekend. You're going out on your own, and I I told everybody earlier that you're um, uh, trying to do different segments of the Arizona Trail. What's your goal there? Well, um, my brother-in-law and I started doing Arizona Trail. Gosh, it's got to be almost eight months ago already. We started, and it didn't start off fast. You know, we're we're a little bit older, so there. You know, it took us a little bit to get used to doing that again, and and then we had to also get used to doing some backpacking, which I hadn't done in quite some time. And lost a little bit of weight, gained a little bit of muscle, started working out a little bit more, so it feels a lot better doing that now. Yeah. And so I also was tired of going out on the trail and then sleeping out on the ground and getting up in the morning and having to uh, to go hike after maybe having a crummy night's sleep on right. the ground and. And this just makes it that much more comfortable. When you do the Arizona Trail, though, you do segments where you do stay overnight. Um, you backpack with your gear. Oh, yeah. So you, you park a, a vehicle at one end and then go to the, the other end of that segment. Right. right. And and I, what I try to do, some of the segments are relatively big. Yeah. And some of them you can break up and some of them you can't. And, of course... What are the a, average miles? Uh, lately, we've been doing about maybe a little over 20. So we break that up in two days. Right. It's a rough it's a rough hike. It's yeah. not like uh, you can get out there and just... No, Arizona's for, rugged. Yeah. It's, it's rugged rough. country. Yeah. And you're climbing mountains all the time and or, you know, rarely are you, say, in flat area where you can really, you know, cruise along walking and hiking. But uh, for the most part, yeah, you're doing a lot of climbing on big hills. Yeah. So you've never been to where we're going today. No. Uh, really exciting place I'm going to take you. It's just really beautiful up here. <clears throat> and you're definitely in shape for it now because you've been doing weekend 20 mile backpack trips mm -hmm. but how heavy is your pack oh mine runs right at about uh, 30 pounds typically 30 is not bad fully loaded fully loaded food and water food and water and do you bring um you bring a filter i do and uh, do you, how much water do you usually carry gosh i'm you know i have a three liter pack and i hate to fill it because it's heavy as heck yeah but, <laughs> six uh, pounds probably. yeah yeah so i try i usually leave with say two liters and i can usually go pretty long time on just two liters yeah. uh, even you know, obviously, as it gets warmer, more water will be yeah. required. Yeah. So um, this this hike today, there will be a couple spots where there's ropes, mm -hmm. uh, and they the ropes are already in place, so we'll just have to climb up a little bit. It's not too big, but there's a couple spots where where you're using a rope to go up the side of a uh, waterfall, and that it's just really going to be an extraordinary hike today. So I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to it too. Well, let's get our packs on, and get ready to go. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right, so we're off on our first day of hiking. Should be an extraordinary hike. I really look forward to sharing this with you. It's a nice stream running down here. Some beautiful views behind us and in front of us. Should be a really good time. We were just talking about how the more you spend time in the Arizona wilderness, the more you start seeing people. And I've lived in Arizona since about 1989, and I've been coming up to some of these places for many, many years. But more and more, you're seeing day hikers and campers in some of these places. And I imagine because this particular area is so dotted with native dwellings and things like that that are ancient, really national heritage, if not international heritage sites, there will be some means for protecting it, whether that be a permit system or, you know, a national monument or even a national park, possibly at some point. I could totally see this area becoming a national park. But then again, if some of you have watched my video about the Chiricahuas down in southeastern Arizona, you know that Chiricahuas is actually a national monument. And people have been working to protect that for it to become a national park 
since about the 1970s and it still isn't one. So the chance of something like this becoming a national park anytime soon is pretty slim. But I just hope that people that do come here and find these locations are responsible enough to protect it and not deface it or steal anything from it or you know leave trash toilet paper and tampons and whatever in some of these places because these places demand respect from the public the nice thing about my channel you know I get a lot of comments from people but sometimes those comments are a little derogatory toward me, toward my channel, toward other adventurers, or whatever. But uh, Dan and I, behind me here, have been talking about how I get a lot of comments, and sometimes those comments being derogatory, sometimes I don't have to do anything about it. My channel has actually become self-healing, which means that when other people post negative comments, the people who really respect what I'm doing, they will actually report that comment to get it deleted or people often respond in my defense or in the defense of what I'm talking about or doing. And uh, in that way, I actually have less management that I have to do of my own channel because of the awesome subscribers that I have. So once again, I really truly appreciate all of you for protecting the channel and my initiative and and me when uh, we get negative feedback. Be okay with those comments and learn something from them. But a derogatory comment can sometimes lead to other thoughts and ideas. Yeah, that's true. May also correct you on something you didn't realize. Maybe, yeah, maybe there's another side of this that makes some sense. Yeah. But, you know, it takes a little fortitude to take some of those comments and say, okay, I'm gonna learn from this. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't hear that, he was talking about how sometimes derogatory negative comments can actually be a positive thing that we can all learn from when people bring up good points. And I've definitely had some people share comments that at first I didn't care much for. And as time went on, I gained some perspective about what they were saying and appreciate some of that feedback. Now we got long hair with no haircuts for four weeks now. <laughs> Longest hair I've had in years. Amy actually helped me cut my hair. Did she? Yeah, I have a clipper. Uh -huh. And I brought it over. She trimmed her kid's hair. I said, hey, hon, why don't you give me a little buzz? She did a pretty good job, actually. Good. Made me look about 10 years younger. Oh, even better. All right, well, we've finished leg one. Yeah. It was a pretty steep climb. We get up high, had to take a nice rest. We'll be going up and climbing up between these two rock outcroppings and, and winding up around and behind this mountain here. slick rock part of the trail. This is what I call phase two.
You don't want to put your feet on that wet stuff right there. That wet stuff will make you slide right down. <sighs> nice swimming hole here. In the summertime. I mean, that's probably six or seven feet deep right there. And then right here, it comes right up and lips over and drops down as a cascading waterfall. This is when they say, let the games begin. All right, this is the tame part of the steep. We're going way up there into that peak. Put in a couple cheetah ropes here. Makes it a lot easier. When you're hiking up this stuff, you're looking down at the ground so much that you don't you fail to look up and see what's above your head. It's this beautiful tree here. And we're in this absolutely gorgeous canyon. We're very high up in elevation. It's really amazing to think that there's ancient peoples that lived way up here way up in that area, which is where we're going. It makes a lot of sense because it's a very secure place to uh, have a home. And then up on top here, there's actually um, pine forests up there. So they had a lot of firewood and they also had the ability to hunt for deer. And as you come down this creek that we were hiking up, it eventually meets up with a bigger creek, which has fish in it. So they could do their fishing down there and uh, just be really safe and secure up here. So we're hiking along here and I've been up here a couple times before. It's really interesting to bring other people up here because they don't notice on the trail because they're looking down and I tell them, hey, stop right here a sec. And I say, look up. And they look up and boom. Look at that. There's a dwelling. Multiple stories tall. Very, very precariously positioned up underneath this ridge. This is a very ancient, absolutely beautiful Native American dwelling. through here, multiple rooms. This is extraordinary. You can see where the wall vag is stuck out. There were lodge poles here, another known, also known as Vegas. See that uh, some of them are still in here, burned out. You can see that uh, at one point there was probably a place for a fire right here in the corner. 
some soot on the walls. From the window to the wall. Wow. Look at this. I've been here before and it never gets old. So this native dwelling is just really incredible. It's just up on a high cliff, drops straight down on the side, totally protected from, you know, anybody that might try to invade the tribe at one point. And I mean, this is a multi-story building. There's probably one, two, there's probably four stories that were here originally. Some of the Vegas are still in here. You can see this one here above my head is burned and uh, it's kind of falling apart. Um, Back in the, probably in the 1920s, the University of Arizona actually came up here and did some archeology. span And so there's some drill holes in some of these lodge poles to determine just how old this ruin actually is. But uh, I mean, it's really incredible. When you look at the walls, you can just totally see where hands printed into the walls and pushed, and, uh, pushed the mud into the rocks and made these walls so sturdy and thick. It's just such an extraordinary place. Yeah, that's up there. Yeah. Just sticking straight out. Yep. Solid. You can see the clouds moving. He's like right here.
All right, we're almost down off the mountain back to camp. I have to say that it probably wasn't the best hike to break in my new Quest 4D Solomon hiking boots. <laughs> I got the, um, instead of the mids, I usually do the mids and this time I decided to do the, the high tops because I have some ankle problems that act up once in a while. But uh, these are waterproof, so that's great. When I slipped and fell into the drink, my boots didn't get wet on the inside anyway. But uh, yeah, when you're buying a new pair of hiking boots, make sure you take a lot of local hikes near home, get them a little bit worked in. I also noticed that the tread on the bottoms of these hadn't been worn in much, so they were a little slick, which probably is one of the reasons that I slipped and fell earlier. Sight for sore eyes, huh? Home again, home again. All right, everybody, I think that's a wrap. I really enjoyed catching up with my brother and spending time with him out in the wilderness, checking out his new Overland rig. If you haven't become a subscriber to the Forex Mission channel, I encourage you to become one. And of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. And if you'd like to support Forex Mission, go to forexpedition.com and go to the store. We've got some really great products in here. We've got some specials going right now. Uh, and of course, you can always visit patreon.com slash forexpedition. Your support goes a long way to creating quality content for this channel. Until the next time, take care.